up guys the bench buddies are back with another bracketology video but this time we have some real brackets to break down as the conference tournaments are starting now so we're going to see some of those teams in here soon and we have you know a lot of updated brackets after the huge weekend of upsets so lots of changes in this week's bracket um and you know we're going to have to start talking about the bid stealers as that comes up so make sure you don't miss that video that we're going to go more in depth there um but Murray State, Davidson, and North Texas are kind of the big three um, that we're going to talk about here that, you know, if they don't win their tournament, they're pretty much in, and that's going to take away, you know, someone from the bubble team. Um, and right now, that would be Rutgers would be the first team that would get, get hurt from that. Moving forward, here's all the other bubble teams. And, I, you know, it's great to see Michigan up here kind of in the last four buys. Um, but, Ty, other than Michigan, which team – you want to see I guess get in or you know really could make a run uh well there's always Memphis obviously they have a lot of talent uh so you got to talk about them uh Oregon is just a team that <clears throat> if they can match up with some good teams in the Pac-12 tournament uh then they might be able to beat them because they tend to play really well against good teams so they could still find their way in and then Loyola uh is a team that bubble teams need to watch out for if they could, you know, win out and then lose in their conference championship, would they get in? Uh, that could steal a bid from somebody. So uh, I'd look at those three teams. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Creighton is a team that no one's still talking about. You know, a team in the Big East that they've all beat each other this year, you know, really kind of just a huge group of teams that could make a run and be really good. And they're a team that no one's talking about because they're just under UConn, I believe, in the standings by a game. And, you know, UConn's a ranked team right now. They're a top 20 team. And Creighton's just behind them, and they're getting no love by AP polls. I mean, even by us. And then, you know, seeing the bracketology as well. Um, but definitely a team to look out for in March that could, you know, make a few wins here and there. And getting into the bracket, we'll start with the West here, Gonzaga being the one overall seed. And they deserve to be there, even though they did just lose. You know, they're probably going to win their conference sermon as well and probably get revenge on St. Mary's again. But if not, I mean, I still, even if they lose again, I just still don't see them dropping just because they are the number one overall seed as well. Um, they're going to breeze to the Sweet 16. They will be playing the South Dakota State Jackrabbits in the Sweet 16. I have both of the five and the four getting upset here. Kind of some crazy, hectic stuff going on first. Uh, 12 and 13 seeds upsetting both of these teams. Not confident in either of those teams going into the tournament right now. So I have Toledo playing South Dakota State and then South Dakota State moving on. Um, but Gonzaga will get to the Elite Eight on a pretty easy run beating them. Uh, Michigan will beat LSU because I got to take them once. I, th I think the bias wouldn't be fair if I didn't take them. Um, but Texas Tech will beat them in the round of 32 to move to the Sweet 16. And Texas Tech will be playing Purdue. Um, and Purdue will be playing Marquette in the round of 32. But I am going to go with Texas Tech here to beat Purdue. I think that'll be a very good Elite Eight matchup or sorry, Sweet 16 matchup out of all teams, you know, out of all these games. But Texas Tech will have the edge because they play better defense. So I have them moving on. But then they'll play Gonzaga. And, you know, I've kind of been coin flipping this game. It seems like every video. I'm still going to go with Gonzaga here. I know that they just lost. You know, Texas Tech's defense can only stop so many. And I think Chet Holmgren is going to be the solution for Gonzaga to get past that defense. All right. Uh, interesting region here. Now with Gonzaga losing, that's going to be a common theme uh, this week with everyone losing. I'm going with Gonzaga and Xavier. Uh, don't feel great about either of those eight, nine teams. So I think Gonzaga breezes their way uh, past Xavier into the Sweet 16. Uh, I am going with Houston. I do think they'll have some trouble there in the first round, uh, but I think they get through that barely. And then they'll play UCLA, who also gets through. Uh, if Houston was healthy, I think they match up well with UCLA, but they're not, unfortunately. So I'm going with UCLA to move on and play Gonzaga. Uh, I I also have Michigan beating LSU. A uh, little biased, but also LSU. Uh, I would pick them to lose to almost every 11 seed the way they're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas Tech moving on. And I'm going with Michigan. That one is biased. I'm going with Michigan to upset Texas Tech. Although Texas Tech struggled last night. Uh, I got Purdue and Marquette with Purdue moving on. Uh, so you got Gonzaga and UCLA. And we saw them play earlier in the season. Gonzaga destroyed them. And UCLA has gotten, I don't want to say worse, but they definitely haven't gotten too much better since then. So I'm going with uh, Gonzaga again. And then you have Purdue and Michigan. Uh, Purdue already has been embarrassed by Michigan. So I think they'll play with a chip on their shoulder and they'll get that win over Michigan. So you have Gonzaga and Purdue. Unfortunately, I'm 
going with Gonzaga. I think they'll have a field day on Purdue's defense, who ranks in the low hundreds uh, for for defenses. So I'm going with Gonzaga in the Final Four. Moving down here to the East, we have Kansas as the one seed. But then after that, this region is probably the best region. I think there's multiple one seeds here. Really, I guess that have been playing like one seeds. But Kansas moved to the Sweet 16. They'll play Wyoming. I think it'll be a tough game, but they'll get by. Um, Arkansas and Illinois will both win here. And I got Arkansas upsetting Illinois. I guess it's really an upset. But Arkansas, I said last video, they're the hottest team in college basketball right now. Ripped off a huge win last week and i think they're going to keep the momentum going not in the sec tournament but even march madness as well um so i have kansas and arkansas playing in the sweet 16 and i'm going with arkansas here again moving on to the elite eight and i think you know i just got to roll with them i've already rolled with them once got to roll with them again and there's no reason for me to hop off the must bus right now but moving to the bottom part of the bracket I have Wake Forest upsetting Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State is very inconsistent, and so is Wake Forest. But I'm going to give it to the ACC here because I think, you know, the Big Ten is going to have a team or two lose in the first round. It just seems like it's going to happen when you have a lot of teams in, um, and this will be that game. Villanova should get by Townsend, um, and Villanova will get by Wake Forest as well, so they'll be moving on in Sweet 16. Michigan State, Auburn, they'll face in the round of 32. Give me Michigan State. Um, Auburn has looked like a 5-6 seed for the last month, the whole month of February, I would say. And I have no confidence in them whatsoever. But Michigan State, I know that they play Michigan tonight. But that doesn't matter, even though they'll lose tonight. We have Michigan State playing Villanova. And State's luck will run out. And Villanova will move on to play Arkansas. So you have three versus five, and I have Arkansas moving on. Must bust. That's all I got to say. All right. Uh, this is the strongest region of the four, and I don't even think it's close. I think uh, I told Zach, I think the top seven teams could all win this region. Uh, so I'm going to start out a little boring here. I'm going all chalk in the first round. I don't see a single higher seed losing their first round matchup. I mean, if you look at all these matchups, uh, I don't know which lower seed you can pick and feel uh, confident at all about it other than maybe Wyoming but I'm going to the top eight to move on uh, I think Kansas beats Seton Hall there in the second round uh, who's kind of fallen off Illinois Arkansas will be a very exciting game that would be the best game of the second round if they matched up I'm going with Illinois right now but that one could really be uh it could go either way. That's kind of a coin flip. Uh, Villanova, Ohio State, another great 3-6 matchup. I'm going with Villanova, though. Uh, Ohio State's struggling right now. I do, I also think Michigan State upsets Auburn. They're kind of trending towards that fraud category now, and Michigan State figured themselves out on uh, Saturday. Uh, so I'm going with them. You got Kansas and Illinois, and I think Illinois matches up really well with Kansas. Their guards can match up well, so I'm going with Illinois there in the upset. And then I'm also going to have another upset down here. I'm going with Michigan State to upset Villanova. So you end up with a four and a seven uh, in the Elite Eight, Illinois and Michigan State. And Illinois, we've already seen them win at Breslin. So I'm going with Illinois to make the final four. Back up top at the south, we have Baylor as the one seed. And I don't really see them struggling unless they play Murray State. And if they play Murray State, I think that is a game that they are very susceptible of getting upset and you know i think i'm gonna do it they are gonna get upset murray state is gonna pull off the huge upset probably the biggest upset i don't know maybe of the first weekend just because you never know with the 14 and the 15 seeds but murray state's gonna go on a run to the sweet 16 and they'll be playing uconn there i think whoever that 12 seed is will beat alabama I know that they've started to kind of figure some things out, but once again, they're 19 and 10 right now. 10 losses is a lot of losses coming into March Madness being a five seed. So I got to go with the upset there. So UConn will move on over Murray State in the Sweet 16. Murray State's luck will run out. Um, and UConn is a team in the Big East that still is getting slept on. I know that they're third right now under Villanova and Providence, but if UConn's healthy and they play how they're supposed to play and not down to the other team's level, uh, they're a top 10 team. I mean, I've, we saw it at the beginning of the year when they played Auburn um, and beat Auburn. What was it? Three over overtimes, four overtimes. I mean, it was over 100 points for both teams. So they're very susceptible of scoring. But moving to the bottom of the bracket, I have St. Mary's beating either Memphis or Indiana. Um, I have Princeton upsetting Tennessee. I've looked at Princeton stats. They are a very solid Ivy League team. So don't sleep on the Ivy League. It seems like they always give whoever they're playing a run for their money in the first round. Um, but I do have St. Mary's getting by Princeton. And then I have 
Duke and Iowa matching up. And then I have Duke as well, uh, moving to the Elite Eight over Princeton, and they'll be Iowa as well. So I have Duke and UConn, and UConn and Bobby Hurley is going to end Coach K's career in the Elite Eight. Um, and UConn will be moving to the Final Four. All right, I'm going with Baylor to start it off over Notre Dame here in this region. Uh, good 8-9 matchup there that could give Baylor trouble, but they're playing really well right now. Uh, I'm going with two upsets in Buffalo. I've got San Diego State moving on, uh, beating Alabama. And I have Vermont, the Catamounts, upsetting UConn. Uh, so you got San Diego State and Vermont. I'm going with San Diego State to make the Sweet 16. Um, the first four to Sweet 16, it seems like you see it every year. I'm keeping that trend going. I'm also going another first four team. I'm going with Indiana over St. Mary's. Uh, moving on there, I'm going with Tennessee uh, to face Indiana. And I think Tennessee moves on. Uh, could get a little bit of trouble from Indiana, but I think their defense will shut them down. I'm going with Iowa and Duke. And I have Duke moving on past Iowa there. So you have uh, Baylor and San Diego State. That should be an easy win for Baylor to get to the Elite Eight. Pretty easy road there. And then you have Duke and Tennessee. And I think Tennessee upsets Duke and goes to the Elite Eight. I think they end the Coach K era a little early and match up with Baylor in the Elite Eight. And I'm giving the edge to Baylor, who's playing really well despite being injured right now. In our last region here, the Midwest, we have Arizona the one seed, a very ugly loss to Colorado, um, but we'll see how they respond this week. I don't see them having any trouble in the first weekend. They'll be moving to the Sweet 16, um, probably be playing Boise State. I think they're a really good team. But then again, TCU is very susceptible of upsetting some teams, as we've seen. Um, but it, it won't matter. Arizona will get through. I have Texas moving on, Providence moving on, Providence moving to the Sweet 16 to play Arizona. Um, and my team, the Friars, you know, I like them, but I just can't see them beating Arizona right here. So I got to go with Arizona to the lead eight. My will take Creighton that I was talking about earlier in the video to upset USC. I think USC is a fraud team, and we're going to see that tonight um, when they play Arizona. I think they will get blown out, and then they'll also get blown out again on Saturday against UCLA. Wisconsin, though, they'll move to the Sweet 16 as they'll beat Texas State and Creighton, um, and they will be playing Kentucky, who will, will scrape by North Carolina, I think, in an overtime or double overtime game. I think that's going to be probably the best game of the round of 32. You know, North Carolina, we saw last night, they can play some really good basketball, but let teams back in it. But if they play really good basketball and don't let you back in it, uh, they're they are a 10 seed that you wouldn't want to play. That is for sure. Um, but I do think Kentucky squeaks by them, and they'll squeak by Wisconsin as well to move to the Elite Eight to play Arizona. So I have one versus two, and I'm going to go with the two in Kentucky. So I only have one one seed going to the Final Four. All right, I'm going with Arizona here over TCU. Uh, that could be a really low-scoring game there, Boise State, TCU. But I'm going with Arizona either way. Uh, I have Texas and Providence both squeaking by in the first round. And I'm giving a slight edge to Texas in that matchup to move on and play Arizona uh, just do their defense. Uh, I think USC scrapes past Creighton just because Creighton's without their point guard, RJ Nemhard. Uh, but I think USC, or sorry, Wisconsin, I think, uh, easily gets by Texas State and USC into the Sweet 16. I'm going with North Carolina there over Iowa State and Kentucky getting past them to the Sweet 16. So you have Arizona and Texas there. Uh, Texas, I don't know if that's a good matchup for, uh, for Texas in that 1-5 in that matchup there. Arizona just has too much size for that Texas defense. I think Arizona moves on. And then you have Kentucky and Wisconsin, another matchup that I think Kentucky could absolutely wipe the floor with Wisconsin if they match up. I just think that's a terrible matchup for Wisconsin. Uh, so I think it's Arizona and Kentucky in the Elite Eight, and I'm going with Kentucky there. Uh, Arizona has size, but Kentucky has Sheboy to match up with Arizona's size, so I'm going with Kentucky. In my final four, I have Gonzaga playing Arkansas, UConn versus Kentucky, and I'm going to go with Gonzaga this time over Arkansas. I think that loss has woke them up and really, you know, all right, we need to get back on course here achieve the mission you know they went this far last year didn't win at all and I think they'll get back to that same spot and they'll be playing Kentucky who's on a mission as well it's been a while for coach Calipari 
um, getting to this stage, you know, what's it been like 10 years? It feels like they're, this is probably the best team he's had in a long time um, to make a run. And I think they're going to do it. I am going to go with Kentucky here to win it. So I've gone with an SEC team in two straight videos to win it all. I just think the SEC is right now officially the best conference just because of how good teams are playing and making runs. Um, but give me the Wildcats to win it all. All right. Uh, I have Gonzaga and Illinois here. And then I also have Baylor and Kentucky. So uh, Gonzaga, Illinois, I think Gonzaga has too much size. Uh, I know Illinois has Coburn, which could kind of dominate Chet Holmgren. Uh, but I don't think Illinois has an answer for Drew Timmy. So I'm going with Gonzaga there. And then you have Baylor and Kentucky. If Baylor was healthy, this would be uh, basically a coin flip game. But unfortunately, they're without Chama Chachua. It doesn't seem like LJ Cryer is going to play. So I'm going with Kentucky there, who is healthy now. Uh, and then you have Gonzaga and Kentucky. And I've, I've picked Gonzaga the last few times, but that loss to St. Mary's, uh, it might be time to hit the panic button on winning a national championship. I'm going with Kentucky. So for the first time in this video, we have actually picked the same team to win it all which is pretty crazy. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, get us to 100 subscribers, so we'll give away that autograph item. Um, hit that like button, comment below what you guys, or who you guys think is gonna win it all this year or any upsets. But until the next time, the Bench Buddies are out. She never called back.